Folks, if you're on Twitter, you may have seen this tweet floating around. What is the most useless piece of video game knowledge that you know? So I really enjoyed reading all the responses to this. And as it turns out, I know quite a few pieces of useless video game knowledge, especially related to the genre of fighting games. So today, I'm going to be going through, I'm going to be hitting you guys with some extremely useless information but you know it might still be entertaining to you you might do the thing where you blow air fast out of your nose or you might say to yourself hmm that's kind of interesting so if that does happen to you i would appreciate it if you could hit the like button if you like the video it helps me out a huge amount and let me know down in the comments if you guys have any useless fun facts about fighting games that i didn't cover in the video and maybe i can compile them for a future video but with that Let's hop right in and start at the top of the list. So you guys probably know about maybe the most famous moment in fighting games where Daigo parried Justin Wong's Chun-Li Super on the Evo stage. Everybody got really hype. And this is known as Evo moment number 37. But did you know there's actually a reference to this moment in Street Fighter V? If we do Chun-Li Super in Street Fighter V, you may notice it's kind of subtle. This super does exactly 37 hits, which is a reference to Evo Moment 37. And a bonus fun fact is that Evo Moment 37 is not actually the 37th Evo Moment. Ben Kirtan, the person who originally uploaded the Evo Moment 37 video, just picked a random two-digit number because the idea is if we call it Evo Moment number one, then that like means that you've already seen the best moment that Evo wants to offer. So they called it number 37 to kind of imply, well, every year there are tons and tons of Evo moments, even though Evo Moment 37 is definitely the most famous and well-known. Next up, we're going to take things back and look at Tatsunoko versus Capcom. So if you guys don't know, Alex from Street Fighter 3 is in this game, and he's one of the only characters with a command throw. So his command throw, you know, it works as you would expect, but something about this game is there are characters of drastically different sizes in this game. So we have tiny characters like Roll, and you know, they do a pretty good job of making the command throw work, even with the very small characters. But what about the extremely large characters? Tatsunoko vs. Capcom is unique amongst Capcom games because it has what are called giants. These guys are huge, and yet... <laughs> Alex somehow finds a way to grab them by the toes. So this gets especially crazy when you factor in his super. So of course he has stun gun headbutt. That works as you would expect on a normal size character. Let's check it out on a short character here. Yeah, he you know, he just brings you up to his level. So it still works. What about his command throw super? The hyper bomb. Look, that works just fine on normal and small characters, but let's try it on a giant. You can level three throw them, and again, it's gonna be by the toes, he's gonna slam you around. Amazingly, they actually coded a specific animation for that. And then, of course, the stun gun headbutt. We might be getting a little bit not safe for work with that one, but it actually does work. So shout outs to Capcom for actually letting you use uh, all these command throws on these massive screen filling characters. It, it seems like they really went the extra mile to make sure that Alex could do his thing in all these matchups. Next up, let's go to one of my personal favorites here, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So we're going to be taking a look at Sean's intro animation here. So you can see when Sean enters the match, he has a few different animations. He might just throw the basketball off to the side. He might toss with empty hands you know he's doing the he's doing the kobe but if you're specifically on sean's stage he will actually shoot the basketball and there is a small percent chance of the basketball connecting with the opponent i actually learned about this from automatic i'll link his channel down below but hold on i'm gonna refresh the game a bunch until i actually get the basketball to hit because it's it's kind of random all right let's see if he can hit it oh he actually landed it Okay, that took about, I don't know, five or six tries for me to get this. And if you notice, it's very, very subtle. He actually builds a minuscule amount of meter if the basketball connects. It doesn't do any damage or anything. So you can see that if, if Elena wins this round, it is going to be counted as a perfect. See, you get the P. So it doesn't count as doing damage, but it does build Sean just the tiniest amount of meter. So this is one of the few ways in a Street Fighter game where the stage can directly impact the outcome of the match. 
and the randomness can impact the outcome because you don't know whether the basketball is going to hit or not. But of course, it is such a tiny amount of meter that I doubt it would ever truly decide a match. But theoretically, in a theoretical world, it could happen. So shout outs to Automatic. He made a video mentioning this and I'll link that down below. On the subject of intro animations, I want to take a look at Yang here. So you can see, you know, pretty normal. That's his special intro against Yun, but this will work with any character. You can see there's nothing special to talk about here, but I'm going to win a bunch of matches real quick. All right, don't mind me. I'm just beating up the dummy here. I'm at one win. All right, we just hit four wins. So keep an eye out here. You, you guys see the cat? The cat is here. This cat only appears when you get above three wins. And this will happen on any stage, regardless of where you are. You can see the cat. He, he's almost out to the edge there, but there he is. He'll make an appearance with every win. And I had always heard, it, it was I was always under the impression that he appeared in the intro animations as well. But guys, I've been I've been at this for a little while and I can't get the cat to appear. Is it random? Was I was I wrong about this all these years? Hold on, I've tried it on different stages and everything. Let's tr let's try it against Yun. Where where's this cat at? I don't see him! Hold on, let me try against a different character, maybe because it's the special intro. Alright, here's a normal intro. No special intro. Where's the cat? There's supposed to be a cat. I don't know. In case of the missing cat, if you guys know where this cat is at, let me know. I always thought that he showed up in the intro and the outro, but for whatever reason, I can only get him to show up in the outro for this video. So, uh, yeah, a little impromptu. Let me know in the comments if you know why the cat's not there during the intro. What's up with that? All right, next up, this one is the first bug on the list. This is not an intentional feature, unlike all the others. And this is for Marvel vs. Capcom 3, specifically Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, the Steam version, which is currently the version that is played the most in tournaments, online tournaments and stuff people all run on Steam. So uh, take, a, take a listen to this. You guys, is it just me or does that sound seem a little wrong? Hold on, let's try Do you guys hear that? So, essentially, there is, there is a bit of a switch in this game where all of Frank's plunger moves, they accidentally switched the plunger attack sound effect with the zombie sound effect. So, like, his zombies that he throws, you know, the sound of them grunting is applied to all his plunger attacks, and this bug has not been patched. This has been in the game for, I don't know, several years at this point. Since since this port came out, they still have not patched this bug, which is kind of funny. And of course, Frank has a level up mechanic. Once you level up to the point that he starts using the broom instead of the plunger, this no longer happens. So it's specifically the plunger has that weird sound effect bug. This is a really bizarre thing that's only in this version of the game, but y you end up seeing it quite a bit on the Steam version. I'm sure that uh, fan mods have probably fixed this, but if you're playing the, the stock version of the game that's available for purchase right now, this bug is still out there, so that's pretty funny. All right, I got one more bonus fact for you guys. So Deadpool is in this game, and so obviously he has a lot of references to various things. Like, here's one. He does an impression of Magneto from uh, the X-Men arcade game. But here, he also says, <laughs> Magneto, wear your curly mustache at, which is, of course, a reference to the Marvel vs. Capcom player and commentator IFC Yipes. IFC Yipes famously coined the phrase calling someone Pringles and asking them where their curly mustache is at back in the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 days. Make sure to check out this old video. Marvel baby if you haven't already this has like millions of views at this point and it, it's an all-time legend shout out to IFC Yikes. all right next up we're going over to vampire savior this game has about a million secret taunts for whatever reason in addition to everyone's regular taunt they also gave a ton of them unique taunts that you have to have special conditions to unlock for example Lord Raptor he has a few standard taunts he can uh, do a little guitar flourish he also can just, you know, point at you or whatever, a little JoJo pose. But Lord Raptor has a crush on Shenko, and so if you're fighting against Shenko, his taunt instead becomes <laughs> this love-struck, eyes popping out of his head uh, look. So that's a unique one. If you're fighting against BB Hood, for whatever reason, <laughs> this little fish assistant guy, 
uh, seems to have a crush on BB Hood. So he'll come out and get the hard eyes for BB Hood, but then, you know, just kick him out of the way. Anakaris has a bunch of interesting ones. So he has his normal taunt here, but if you do taunt plus all three punches, then you can get you can get these dudes to come out and carry, I guess, all the all the remains from outside of his sarcophagus. And then if you're playing the Anakaris mirror match, if the opponent does uh, this, you know, parade thing and you taunt back, you'll send out a mummy to breakdance. And then if you do the parade back, he'll he'll just get a little boogie on, I guess. But one of the most interesting taunts has to be with Victor. He's the grappler of the game and he has a 720 super like this where he grabs you with his butt and then the ending animation you know he picks his nose but if you do a raging demon input this is not a joke if you do light punch light punch forward light kick heavy punch during the animation of the 720 it has a unique ending and it's gonna look like this okay i'm just gonna enter it a few times to be safe and he just shakes his butt and that's it why is this in the game this is so pointless it doesn't do anything it's not easy to input why is this in the game i don't know just a, a fun little easter egg for the grappler fans at home and the butt fans i guess that one's for you guys all right and finally to close out the list we're going to be taking a look at skull girls so skull girls is kind of cheating this game has like a million references i mean even the the character palettes each one is like a reference to something specific and super niche and unique. So there are a million Easter eggs and stuff like that in this game, but there's a few in particular that I want to look at. The first is going to be another random one. And this has to do with Cerebella's lock and load move. For whatever reason, when you do this move, there is a very small chance. I'm just going to have to spam this a lot. Hold on. Oh my God, there it is. Do you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> the poorly drawn cat. I, I moved my head out of the way in case it ran across this side of the screen. Guys, I've, I've been spamming this move for like 15 minutes. The poorly drawn cat has only a 0.2% chance to appear when hitting the opponent with Cerebella's lock and load move. Uh, this really does not need to be in the game. You can play this game for hundreds of hours and never see the cat in just normal play. But there it is, in case you guys were wondering. So that's one fun little Easter egg. But probably my favorite Easter egg in this game has to do with Peacock's crouching medium kick. So her crouching medium kick, it's kind of subtle. You guys might see what this move actually is, is an ant starts walking along the screen and Peacock fries it with a magnifying glass, which is really one of her like Peacock feather eyes things on her arm. So she fries it with a laser and you can hit the opponent with the laser which i guess is just magnified sunlight is the laser so anyway that's the move but you can actually interrupt the move before the ant dies and he will continue to cling to life and and run across the screen and he'll pretty much be there you know until until he goes off screen off the off the edge and then he's gone and there are a few interesting ways that you can interact with this ant for example an enemy peacock can fry the ant with her own uh laser so that's a little bit sad you can get it you can get a double kill or maybe even like a multi-kill hold on let's see oh yeah three ants <laughs> in one laser so you can try to rack up a high score see how big of a, an ant murder spree uh you can go on if you're playing peacock in the mirror also umbrella has an aegis reflector style move so this will of course reflect any and all ants back to you so uh it interacts with a few moves that way Robo Fortune's crouching medium punch, for example, will also interact with the ant, sadly destroying the ant. But something that always bothered me was that Squiggly's heavy punch fire moves do not interact with the ant. Lab Zero, if you're watching this, pa patch this in. This is this is the only issue that I have with the game, <laughs> is that the ant uh, walks right through the flames. But it is kind of cool how like the the real time lighting interacts with the ant. Do you guys notice that that like the pink fire? actually lights the ant up that's pretty insane that the game actually works like that but yeah i mean Skullgirls, i think more than almost any other fighting game has an insane amount of care and attention to detail like almost every move that certain characters have 
is like a reference, you know, Charlie Brown and Super Mario 3 and like so many different things. So I think it's really, really cool and uh, a really nice love letter to fans of fighting games and pop culture in general. So what do you guys think? What's your favorite Easter egg that we talked about today? And let me know down in the comments if there are some other useless little fighting game details uh, that weren't on the list. I would love to hear about them. So uh, with that, we're going to end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.